Hey, it's Nick Baldwin, Lab Code Agents. We're live today with, with Molly Stewart from Home Warranty of America. And we're also live with Misty Soldwish, who is an agent. She's been in the business for 19 years. She was a broker owner. She's also a team leader. She's had a team for six years at Better Homes and Gardens. Last year, her team did 371 transactions, which is absolutely incredible. And she has been leveraging Home Warranty of America to get listings. And I'm really intrigued by how she's doing that because there's a lot of um, misunderstanding or just not understanding at all about how we can and when we should suggest or offer a home warranty. And I'm also really curious as to how that, how you're leveraging getting the listings by using that. So I'm really happy to have both of you here. We're going to clear up uh, a lot of misconceptions and bring a lot of value to our, to our viewers. So thanks for being here with us today. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So where do we want to start? Molly, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about Home Warranty of America and some of the things that you offer and some of the products that might, um, that might appeal to buyers and sellers these days. Sure, definitely. So Home Warranty of America, we are the only national 13-month home warranty company, uh, which is nice because it ends up being lucky 13 and your clients still get to call in on month 13 and save themselves some money. So most homeowners are not familiar with home warranties for that seller and that buyer. Just like they're not familiar with the lender, or the title, the home inspector, they don't know much about it. And so for the realtor to add value to their portfolio of services, one of those services is the home warranty. So when they're getting their listings and they're make, having that seller say yes to them, uh, they're letting them know Misty's so fabulous at it about the home warranty and having that free seller's coverage during the listing period, you know, getting them to maintain their home, fix things up, but more importantly, having the seller pay for it for the buyer coming in. So she then does that second process of attracting the buyer with the home warranty as well too. For sure. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And so when you propose a home warranty to a seller who doesn't have one, you know, what, what is the process in terms of having them understand like what this covers, right? Like, because I think a lot of people are like, well, you know, that might be a waste of money or it's not going to cover that. Right. So how do you put that value proposition forth? So Missy, I'll let you speak in a minute here. What I always tell the realtors, cause we don't want them you know, having to dig in, you know, all the guts of the warranty. It's just too yeah. much. So I always just say, think peach, right? Peach, plumbing, electrical, appliance, cooling, and heating. Ooh, I like that. It's a good acronym. Um, yeah. Everyone loves peaches. Yeah. And so when they're sitting with their seller and they've got the back of the brochure, it shows all those appliances and other systems that are being covered during listing period as well as for the buyer. And it's a really great peace of mind, right? Right, Misty, don't you think it's a peace of mind? It is. It's, it's um, you know, I think that the thing that stresses out sellers more than anything is the fear of the unexpected, things they can't control. And right. the, the way I explain it to clients is this is a way that we can keep you in the driver's seat during the process. Got it. That's really great. So tell me, let's back up a little bit, right? Tell me about how you first came across the benefits of home warranty and how you started to realize that it would impact your business in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that I learned the benefits of using home warranties the hard way, which is... <laughs> isn't that, isn't uh, that what everybody does, right? It is. I mean, when you have a painful transaction that a warranty could have completely avoided everything falling on you, you go, hmm, maybe I should do it differently in the future. And, right. and really, I mean, that, that is how I came to, I'm all about risk mitigation for my clients and for myself. And, um, and so uh, just seeing how uh, unexpected expenses and having buyers come after sellers for things that really could have been part of that package to begin with, maybe go, you know, 
I need to be better at articulating to a seller uh, because it's, it's exactly like Molly said, like we're the ones who know how this process goes. And if we're not great at explaining it to a seller, they can go, oh, another five to $600 expense. No thanks, I'm being nickeled and dimed for everything. But when right. you really help put it into perspective of the big picture of this large financial transaction and the protection it gives them, then it becomes a no brainer. So I, from what I'm getting at, from what I'm getting from this is it's great because you said you learned the hard way, right? So everybody, everybody, yeah. So like I'm originally from New Jersey and we have flooding in New Jersey and everybody gets a sump pump after their basement floods, right? You mm -hmm. learn the hard way, right? So, so when you get the home warranty during the listing period, the benefit is that God forbid anything goes wrong with the house, right? Like a basement flooding or whatever. I don't want to jinx anything right now, but you're covered, right? For that listing period. And then the buyer has a peace of mind knowing that they're entering into a deal and they're going to own a home that is covered by peach, you know, like you just said, the acronym, which I think is great. So, so is that, is that what I'm getting? So like for that two or three, three month listing period when it goes when you get an offer to under contract there's that peace of mind right anything that goes wrong that could potentially kill the sale would most likely be covered if it falls under those five categories well and then not even i mean that is one amazing benefit but i think a really compelling argument for sellers is to explain that you know um, buyers when they're in their inspection period they are going to be looking at things with a less harsh lens if they know they've got 13 months of coverage after the sale happens. So uh, they might know that, okay, the furnace isn't brand new, but I do have this strong guarantee that I can extend in the future if I want. And instead of making it a deal breaker when it really shouldn't be. Right. So, so you're saying, so through the home inspection process, things that might be seen as much worse in the eyes of the buyer might, might give them a little bit more of, uh, of a less stressful feeling like, Oh, you know what? Maybe I won't hit them up for that because I know that I have the peace of mind that this home warranty is in place for 13 months and it will have it Absolutely. covered. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Molly, let me go back to you for a second. So how does this work? Because the way I've looked at it is kind of like you go to the doctor and you have a copay, right? And you pay that ten or twenty dollar copay, and it covers your doctor visit. Is that similar to how a home warranty might work, depending on what the issue is? Correct. So when that homeowner is calling in a claim, that contractor is going to come out and diagnose the problem, and then they're going to have to pay that contractor that that copay. Right up front. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it works similarly. All right. So I'm sure that there's different like types, different copays for each problem, and are there different copays for like there isn't? Okay, it's the same. No. Well, Misty's yeah. shaking her head. Yeah, it's the same. See, it's so same. I need to be informed too. So I'm learning a lot from you guys yeah. as well. I want to take this back to my agents. So how does it work? The contractor comes in, and then what happens from the contractor there? Contractor comes in or diagnosing the issue. And at the time when they're in the home, that homeowner is going to pay them that, that copay, whether it's $60, $75, or $100, depending on where you live in the country. That's what they're going to pay. And then that contractor calls into HWA, and they take it forward from there on ordering parts or, or replacing. Uh, I love it. Okay, great. That is, I mean, I... I, I there's, there's every so often where I have offered a home warranty, but I think I need to brush up on, you know, the reason why a seller should have it. And we discussed that previously. So I'm glad that I, that you, that you kind of like explained how you went through uh, driving home the value proposition. Um, Missy, do you pay for the home warranty or do you just talk about the benefits of them getting it? I just talk about the benefits of them getting it. We put it in an estimate of proceeds up front when we're talking about pricing strategy and where the proceeds will be at different potential uh, marks in the, the uh, proposed marketing price. And uh, just explain that that is um, a great investment to make to protect the end price and your end financial gain on the home.
I got you. Okay. Hey, um, I'm going to answer a few questions from, from, from the thread here. Uh, Molly, go over peach again. So, so yeah, home warranty, again, think peach. Plumbing, electrical, appliances, cooling, and heating. I love it. It's so easy. So th that's basically the inner workings of a home. Everything that keeps the house running on a daily basis, you know, you're covered and what it's like five or 600 a year or something along those exactly. lines. I'm sorry, yeah, exactly. for lucky 13 months. Right. Exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and so what about basement flooding? I mean, I, uh, that's kind of like, you know, someone's asking, is that covered? But I would assume maybe if you have a, have a sump pump or something, would that be covered? So basically with, with the home warranties, all home warranties, uh, if it breaks down due to normal wear and tear is when that claim's going to move forward. So yeah. basement flooding, you know, during a hurricane or whatever, chances are they're going to have to use their, their home insurance. Right. I mean, because that's like an act of, of, an act of God. An act in of God. Right. Right. I love it. I love it. Um, so, so let's talk about, let's talk about like, you know, are any, any age of the appliance at this point, you know, like let's say you buy a house and there's a furnace that's 50 years old, like in New Jersey, lots of people have 50 year old furnaces, you know, the, the, and by the way, in my opinion, the 50 year old furnaces are the ones that never stop working. Exactly. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's so true. They made you know, them like, last instead of making them to yeah. become obsolescent. Yeah, obsolescent. I've sold homes with 50 year old furnaces and the home inspector's like, you got another 50 years on this. Yeah. And then you have the new furnace that's got a life expectancy of, of 15 years, right? So do you guys cover primarily any age or are there certain variables that the that has to be met? So home warranty companies differ on that one. HWA does not discriminate for age of the home or any of the appliance or systems. So they are good to go. And I was just going to say too real quickly, I know what I'm talking with the listing agents. I know their yeah. goal is to sell that home quickly and at top dollar and to truly walk away from that home. They sold their home, they get to walk away from it. And with that seller purchasing it for the buyer coming in, like that's the true value of seller's mm -hmm. coverage. I deal in claims every single day uh, for all my national clients, and we probably get 90% of our claims the first 30 days of the buyer moving in. Mm -hmm. So really? instead of the listing agent hearing from the buyer's agent where there was no home warranty in play, they get to call HWA and you and your seller get to walk away from it. Why do you think you get most of your claims in the first 30 days? Because people don't know how to use things and they break them? You know, for whatever reason, like we, <laughs> we cover for unknown. I mean, for whatever reason, things are breaking down. You know, I, they just, they just seem to fail. <laughs> and I've wondered about that. I think it's a new yeah. owner uses like, like sometimes someone can be in a home and never use their dishwasher just because that's not part of their routine. Like if it's a small family or whatever, and then someone comes in, it's always, like you said, Molly, it's right away that you see those problems. It's right away that uh, all of a sudden the weather changes and they need to flip on the AC and, oh my gosh, it hadn't run since last year. And so, and it doesn't work now, but right. um it, it really transfers that from being like, oh, the seller knew and they, you know, buyers naturally go to that when there's an issue. Like, why, why didn't they tell us there was an issue with this? And it takes that completely off the table. They have yeah. someone to take care of it. Right. So let's, let's look at it from the, from like the buy side, Misty, right? So, I mean, when you're, when you're representing buyers um, and they are, you know, they're looking at homes for sale. Let's say the home doesn't have a warranty because you're not the listing agent. Um, have you ever maybe gifted that or offered that? Because I can see how offering something like that could potentially turn into referrals, right? Ah, oh, I moved into the house and the furnace broke after the first month, like Molly said, and Misty suggested the home warranty and it worked and I'm gonna refer her to everyone I know because it was such a great suggestion, right? Do you have, what do you see from the buy side? So it's interesting because you had asked about if it was something we included with listings. And I said, no, I see the value in a seller investing in that on their own. And on the buy side, um, our gift to our clients is negotiating well. <laughs> and oh, and okay. part of that negotiation 
is making sure that's included and having that be a compelling argument as part of our negotiation. Even if that agent isn't pro warranty, explaining to them that this buyer is going to see the home in a different lens, knowing there's that protection. So I'm a big believer in, I think it's really important to do things that are of great value to our clients, but just giving it to them. I mean, $600 product, I don't think, I think us having that be part of their negotiation, giving them the advice, negotiating it into the purchase, and then having them see the end result gets just as much <coughs> referral uh, love from clients as actually us spending the money as agents. And I think that can be a really dangerous trap that agents get into sometimes of giving away when we actually did give them a gift in the first place. Well, I actually did, just did the math on that. And you'd basically, you'd probably be in the red if you did that for everyone you know. Basically. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I actually think the negotiation tactic is much more powerful, powerful, right? Like let's look at where the industry is going right now. Right. So like the industry is in a shift. It's not just in a market shift, but it's in a tech shift. And so us as agents have to be even more on our game when it comes to negotiating what's best for our clients. You can negotiate, anyone can buy a home warranty for somebody, but if right. you use your expertise and negotiate that for them, you're right. Like that's, that's something they're going to be like, you know, Misty totally crushed it and negotiated this for us. And I would recommend her to anybody because she gets them, gets you whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and if my math was correct, if you bought one for every home you sold, it would be over $200,000. So probably not the best thing to buy <laughs> everybody that you work with. So negotiation is the best way to go about that. I had to calculate that twice because I thought I might be wrong. You're but, like, it can't um, be that much. It can't be that much. Um, but, but no, that's great. That's great. Um, and also, so also, Nick, I was just going to say really quick, what's nice too is the real estate agent gets to reach out to their client again after the transaction. So when they call in a claim, um, the realtor gets an email saying, Hey, we just saved Sarah and Bob, you know, $1,200 on their furnace. And now you get to reach out to the client saying, Hey, I'm glad the home warranty worked for you. If you know of anyone looking to buy or sell a home, you know. So it's, it's nice if you can continue that, that touch program on. Well, that's huge. I'm glad you brought that up, right? So the agent gets an email that their client is put, submitted a claim, and then they get the email when the issue was resolved, right? I would assume something along those lines. Either way, they're getting a notification, right? So it's an opportunity for the agent to reach out make sure everything's okay, to see how it went, see if there's anything else you can do to help them. I love that. Molly, that's huge. Yeah. Like, that's huge. It's nice. It's a free touch, right? And so you yeah. can continue that relationship on even after the transaction. Like for, for Misty, I think in 2018, we paid over $64,000 in claims. Because wow. She, wow. She has a lot of home warranties. So – that would have been 64,000 in lawsuits. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Misty, 371 homes sold last year. Approximately how many of those homes were, were you able to, to get negotiate or the home warranty for? She did about 200, I think Misty, right? Oh. Yeah. And, and we, and, I mean, we had land deals, we had new construction deals, yeah. but I mean, weren't necessarily as relevant for, for the home warranty. But we are a huge, like, that is a go-to that, um, and it's how both I train my home selling specialists and my home buying specialists, like, warranties are important, and uh, they are part of our strategy. Oh, no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, 200 out of 371, mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not the others were land or not, I mean, that's a, that's yeah. like, that's huge, you know, that's a yeah. huge huge number. So that's, that's amazing. And that's a lot of extra touches that you could be doing based on, you know, the notifications of the claims that people are making. But I love that. And you're saving a lot of people, a lot of heartache, you know, especially when they're moving into the house, they don't know how to use things. They're breaking stuff. You know, I remember I had a, I remember I had a guy move into a house and he, t he, he didn't know how to use the furnace and he turned it on and didn't know how to turn it off. And the thing went up, the water went up through the house, you know, into the water. Oh, we had a whole warranty for the guy. 
you know, yeah. <laughs> that I, yeah. I learned my and, lesson. And also, right, the buyer, the buyer's spending so much money already moving in. I mean, they're, they're spending so much money. They're fixing up this, they're remodeling this, they're yanking out the carpets, putting hardwood floors in, yep. putting the fence up. You know, it's just, it's a great peace of mind. Well, so I, um, I, I've owned a home that was 100 years old. And now I own a home that's 20 years old. So there's pluses and minuses to owning old homes. Uh, the plus to owning ho old homes is that usually you find newer appliances, right, in a 100-year-old house. The plus side to owning a 20-year-old house is it's 20 years old, but everything in the house is 20 years old. And that's when things start to get to the end of their life. So mm -hmm. I've been on both sides of the, uh, yeah. of the coin there. So it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, do you have any, like any specific, Misty, any specific tips for agents out there that are maybe having trouble like selling the value proposition to a seller? Oh, I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to get this, this, this is ridiculous. Why would I need this? Nothing's gone wrong. And what's going to go wrong in the next two months while the house is under contract? You know, what are some objections that you're facing and how are you overcoming them? Well, I mean, I think, I think the best way to overcome objections on the warranty is just to have them kind of relate to situations they've seen before happen to other people and how we might prevent that for them. And I do think that the most compelling thing to a doubter um, is talking about the home inspection uh, time frame and how that um, that home warranty just makes it so much softer. And another thing that we do for sellers as an option is we do a certified pre-owned home program that okay. they have a home inspection done up front and then they pair it with offering the home warranty. And I think the compelling part to the doubters is saying that exactly what happens, that the hard part for a seller you know, you finally get a, a deal put together. And then if it was a lot of back and forth, that buyer, their goal is to get them in the home inspection. Like, okay, this is going to be my opportunity to renegotiate because the seller was, you know, I, I felt like I paid more than I wanted to. And so I'm going to pick apart everything in this home. So what we say to sellers is, you know, if we have that home inspection done up front and we use a great reputable home inspector who's not going to sugarcoat things, who's going to really show us what are the things that could be um, something that needs to be addressed. It puts you in the driver's seat. So you're mm -hmm. calling the shots instead of the buyer's home inspector. And no seller wants the buyer's home inspector to be in control of what happens with their transaction. Right. And so, so saying, you know, that, Plus layering that with a warranty, you are in complete control instead of someone else being in control. And I think the hardline sellers, that's the compelling argument for them. That makes a lot of sense. Somebody actually just said, um, and I covered this before, agent should pay for it as a value add. So I just want to reiterate, when you're doing volume like Misty, two things. When you're doing volume like Misty, it's not cost effective first of all second it's so much more effective when you win like when you win right when you win that during a negotiation for your buyer right anyone can pay for it hey sure i'll buy it for you there's no skill involved in that so when you are skilled in negotiating for your buyers and getting it you know i feel like that's such a huge win in my opinion and i, I think misty obviously you agree but rick if you're paying for them and you're doing almost 400 transactions a year and 200 of them are, are, are getting the warranties, I mean, you know, you're going to go broke, dude. That's all. That's all I'm saying. It's just like, it's not cost effective, but um, I agree. I agree with that. Um, that's very cool. So a lot of people here are saying uh, that it's, you know, obviously it's the best gift. Um, you know, when you negotiate it, it's a great gift. Um, some pumps. Yeah. Some pumps are covered. Correct. Molly. Some yes. pumps are covered. Um, yeah, you do get the notification when there's when there's a claim, which is great because it gives you the opportunity, you know, to reach out for that extra touch. So I think that that's super powerful. Um, we haven't been offering them as much as we should, 
And uh, yeah, Rich just agreed with me. Yeah, that would hurt. That would hurt if he had to pay for every single one. Uh, so he agreed with me. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I'm going to start offering them a heck of a lot more um, or not offering them, but suggesting them and putting forth the value proposition. Do you have in your listing consultation, do you have kind of like as part of it, you know, the benefits like, you know, for them to see really clearly. Okay. So you can talk them through what that looks we do. like. So, and particularly when it's talking about like pairing it with doing the pre-inspection, we talk about um, typically buyers estimate costs of repairs as being two to three times more than the actual cost is um, yeah. on most items. And so, um, and that's just, it's a human nature thing. And so um, we talk specifically about that and um, just the, the way that we're able to eliminate surprises before it closes and then also after mm. it closes like molly touched on that when you sell your home you want to walk away you don't want to like be answering uh issues and questions about it uh right away afterwards gotcha months later for that matter <laughs> yeah definitely I, yeah for sure for sure um somebody asked mary carlton how would you suggest negotiating a buyer to pay for it when you're the listing agent and buyer agents are not aware of what home warranties are for or the benefits of them. I'm trying to figure out that question. So how would you suggest negotiating a, how would you suggest negotiating a buyer to pay for it? Well, it, well that's not what we were suggesting. I think we were, we were suggesting negotiating that the, if you're representing the buyer, having the, having the seller pay for the home warranty for the buyer, right? And so let me ask you a question. After you've represented a buyer and you go through a home inspection on a house that obviously isn't your listing, um, and you find that the home inspection has some issues, right? Um, have you found that when you negotiate a home warranty on behalf of your buyer, have you found that they sometimes, obviously depending on the person, have you found that maybe they back down on some of the potential issues that came up during the inspection? Do you think that that could be something um, that might happen? Well, I think it helps a lot because um, if it's a situation where, like, I think that when a buyer goes through a home, like an appliance, they have a, an idea right away. It's not brand new. Yeah. Um, it seems it's working okay, but it might have a little bit of age to it. Um, they know, yeah, oh, this is something that is fine right now. I might need to do something in the future with it. They have the home inspection. Maybe they get from the inspector looking at the serial number. Okay, here's exactly how old it is and seems to be working okay. This maybe isn't perfect on it, but it's working fine. Those are things that some buyers can kind of get hung up on. And it's like, okay, you know, this is a $250,000 purchase. We're getting hung up on something with a refrigerator, an ice maker, you know, not working quite correctly or something like that. You have a home warranty. So if it does stop working, they're going to take care of it. And the really great thing is if they can't fix it, then they're going to offer a replacement. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And oh. so don't, don't worry about getting hung up on this in the scheme of things. Everything else about the house is perfect for you and you're protected. Love it. Love it. Hey, um, Molly, so when it comes to the contractors, do you guys have Home Warranty of America preferred contractors or can the homeowner at that point, you know, call anyone they want? How does that work? So we work with contractors throughout the country and get them to say yes to HWA. So when that client calls in, we're able to pull the contractors right away for them. Uh, who's in their, uh, whatever, 20 mile radius and yeah. reach out to those contractors and get one of them out there. I got you. So you have to be like, you have to be selected. Is there like a vetting process? Yep, there is. Uh-huh. They need uh, definitely to be uh, insured, bonded, and have um, good, good reviews as well, too. I got you. And everybody is, um, everybody's probably, probably awesome because they go through this process to make sure that, you know, they get the best service. That's, that's the goal, Nick. The goal is <laughs> that's everyone's the goal. awesome. That's the goal and for I'll everyone to be awesome. And okay. I'll piggyback on, on that just because, you know, I'm in Iowa. And so 
we we cover a really wide service area and so there are some markets that we cover that are you know like an hour from a major metro and so they're not as close to uh, service providers. And what HWA does, which is really great, is if they don't have someone, uh, because you're in a town of 2,000 people an hour from civilization, um, they'll, they'll let, let you, um, you know, they'll, they'll say, hey, we don't have someone that's nearby for this issue. Do you have someone in mind? And if you do, just have them call us and we'll get the process wrong. So they don't become the obstacle in that. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, is there anything that I'm missing or anything that I'm not mentioning that you feel people should know about that I haven't brought up? So Nick, I was just going to go back to that one question. I forget whose it was, but that we're asking about if the seller won't pay for it. Um, right. yeah, and, exactly. and, and they're the buyer's agent. So yeah. if the seller isn't going to pay for it, they really want to have their buyer represented and making sure they're covered because they are going to be spending a lot of money moving in. So we do offer a 12 month payment plan. If the buyer doesn't have that up front and they still want that peace of mind of having a warranty, they can take the 12 months and, and pay it out. Okay. 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 That's good to know. That's good to know. Misty, anything that, that I should, that I should have brought up that I didn't, that I didn't think of that maybe people should know about? You know that I don't want to. I don't want to leave any stone unturned, um, for lack of a better cliche. <laughs> no, I mean I think you you hit the the you know broad spectrum of it. You know it is a great tool for sellers for helping them mitigate surprises, which is the thing that sellers hate. Um, yeah. It is a great tool for buyers uh, to make sure that you know, especially you know, when you're making a move into a new home, you just, um, the fear of, of not knowing what expenses that you're going to have is a big one and this helps control that. And then, you know, beyond that, uh, just as agents, we have tools at our disposal that, that add a lot of value to our clients and then also mitigate our risk because, uh, you know, whenever, whenever something goes wrong, um, it's amazing how it's the agent's fault. And, oh, <laughs> you know, it's just worth an ask. We make so much money and we didn't oh. tell them about this. And, um, and so whatever we can do to, um, to help mitigate that, it, it just keeps our business strong. Yeah, so one of the things that my team does is we suggest a pre-home inspection, but I also feel that you know, a pre-home inspection, I tell them, listen, do a pre-home inspection, um, but what you have to understand is, you know, the person who's going to then come in and inspect the home for the buyer, it's probably not going to be the same person, right? So I think the pre-home inspection combined with a home warranty could really be, you know, like that double threat and that extra, you know, the extra uh, form of, of comfort. Um, so, yeah, I think that... Um, that it's, it, both of those combined would be, do you, guys, do you suggest pre-home inspections by any chance? You do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. With our, our certified pre-owned home program. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and Nick, if I can just add to that, um, one, mis one misconception is, you know, they might be talking to their buyers or their sellers and saying, oh, just get the warranty. Everything's covered. Right. And especially if they're not even doing home inspections and the buyer moves in and, you know, and there's several main items not working. For the warranty companies, it has to be in proper working order or it's going to get denied. So, you know, I'll hear, oh, y'all, you know, you didn't cover anything. You denied everything. And, you know, if there's a home inspection report and it wasn't fixed at time of home inspection when it should have been or replaced, it, the, the warranty company isn't going to move forward with that. Right. So, it's not like it's not like if something's broken, but when you move in and you knew about it and then you have the warranty, they're not going to then come in. and. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So just just educating that that seller and buyer on the whole process. But just as a, a plug for one reason, I really do like HWA in particular is over the years. I mean, I've been a big warranty user for a long time and over the years the obstacle that i've seen is that a service 
provider will then say, well, this clearly was a pre-existing condition. And it's like, well, we, we'd had a home inspection and they didn't note it and, um, and it still was denied. And HWA, um, they cover unknown pre-existing conditions. So you had a home warrant or you had a home inspection and it was something that just wasn't in the scope of the home inspection or wasn't discovered in that, they, that claim can't be made, which I think is really yeah. uh, a great benefit to our clients. So yeah, I just wanna say before we wrap up, I really think um, that the strategy is, is, is fantastic. You know, like you go in and you, and you um, just relate to the seller, listen, you know, and things may not have gone wrong in the 30 years that you lived here, uh, but we're going to list your house and when we get the offer, it's going to take, you know, 30 days or so to close. And you just want to make sure that during that time period, you know, nothing goes drastically wrong. And if it does, you're going to have that coverage when the buyer comes in and does a home inspection. Um, we can, you know, use the home warranty as a negotiation in terms of saying like, listen, you know, um, this may not be working the way you would like, but we do have the home warranty in place and it, and it is covered. Um, and then vice versa, when you're negotiating on behalf of a buyer, negotiating that, that home warranty um, to maybe offset some of the issues on the home inspection that, you know, are, that seem to be minor, but are bothering the buyer. Cause you know, listen, we've all had deals that almost fell apart over a hundred dollars um, cause people aren't, in the right frame of mind. Okay um, <laughs> yeah. So like I had it's a buyer. Almost back, yeah. I had a buyer <laughs> almost back out over a hundred, over a wire on the outside of the house that didn't have a conduit, you know, covering it. And it was a hundred dollars and the seller wouldn't do it. And I said to her, Hey, just curious tomorrow morning after you back out of the seal over a hundred bucks and you wake up, are you going to feel good about that? And, and I said, because your friends are going to ask you what happened. You're going to have to tell them and they're going to tell you, you backed out or over a hundred bucks, you know, so it kind of like, you know, it puts things into perspective and it can, maybe it, it keeps those conversations from happening. Right. So yeah. both ways it can be a, a huge benefit. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, great. So this was awesome. I learned a lot. I took some notes over here, so I'm going to start implementing some of this stuff. And Molly, thanks for being here. And Thank Miss, you. yeah, thanks for being here as well. It was awesome. And uh, if you have any home warranty of America questions, Molly, I'll tag you in the post. People can reach out and I'll tag you, Misty, as well. People can ask you any questions they want if they want to message you uh, through Facebook. But awesome. I'm glad you guys were here and, and I had a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Thanks, thanks so Misty. Nice. Thanks, Molly. All right. Bye. See you later.